Hello students, welcome to dbdevil.com, your online portal to the world of invaluable knowledge. During our last discussion, we talked about perpetuity. We discussed the derivation of the formula for the present value of an ordinary perpetuity as well as the present value of a growing perpetuity. We also saw that in the case of perpetuities, when the n or the time factor extends up to infinity, the value of the common ratio r raised to the power of n approaches almost zero. It almost becomes zero. And the moment it becomes zero, the entire, the entire expression for calculation of the present value changes. In the case of an ordinary annuity, the present value reduces to present value is equal to annuity upon i. While in the case of the growing annuities, the present value takes the form of a, that is annuity upon i minus g. We also saw an, an illustration with the help of which we understood the working of the present value of an ordinary annuity. In this session, we shall be discussing about the calculation of the present value of a growing annuity with the help of a numerical. And in this session, we shall be taking up our last topic under the chapter time value of money, that is the multi-period compounding, which shall bring an end to the entire chapter dedicated for time value of money. So students, let's start this session with an illustration dedicated towards calculation of the present value of a growing annuity which extends up to infinity. The question says an investment company promises an annual cash flow of 1000 USD till infinity which shall grow at 5% per year. How much should Mr. Dalton pay for the instrument if his required rate of return is 10%? Once again, students, the question says that there is one, there is one investment company which promises an annual cash flow of 1000 USD. Not only that, the annuity cash flow of 1000 USD shall be growing at the rate of 5% till infinity. So we are required to calculate the present value of such an infinite growing annuity if the required rate of return of Mr. Dalton is 10%. So you can see students that we are having all the necessary variables in our hand that is the annuity amount is 1000 USD which is growing at the rate of 5% per year. So the annuity has been provided to us, the growth rate has been provided to, provided to us. We know that the n extends till infinite time period and the required rate of return for Mr. Dalton is 10%. We can easily use the formula for calculating the present value for a growing perpetuity and all the conditions are conducive for the calculation because we can clearly see that the required rate of return or i is more than the growth rate which is a precondition required to make the r or the common factor less than 1 and we have already seen that whenever the r or the common factor is less than 1 and in that case when it extends up to an infinite n number of years the value of r to the power of n almost becomes zero which makes the entire formula of present value for growing annuities till the time period of infinity reduced down to present values equal to annuity upon i minus g so therefore just putting the variables at the respective places in the formula we arrive at the expression as p is equal to 1000 usd upon i minus g that is p is equal to 1000 upon 0 0.10 minus 0 0.05 where where the a is 1000 usd and which i is 0 0.10 that is a discount rate and growth rate is 0 0.05 therefore the present value after solving 1000 upon 0 0.10 minus 0 0.05 that is by dividing 1000 USD by 0 0.05 we are getting 20,000 USD as the present value so 20,000 USD is the present value of the investment which if Mr. Dalton takes up shall guarantee him a perpetually growing annuity of 1000 USD growing at the rate of 5% per year against his required rate of return of 10%. So students hope this brief discussion regarding perpetuity, regarding the concept of perpetuity, regarding the change in the formula in light of the fact that when n approaches 
infinity the common ratio or r raised to the power n approaches or nearly touches zero we also saw how the formulas are changing under both the cases that is another case of an ordinary infinite annuity as well as an growing infinite annuity i hope all these discussions have made our uh, knowledge or our understanding of the perpetuities to some extent clear so let's proceed with the last leg of our discussion under the broad chapter of time value of money known as multi period compounding now students take a closer look at the term it is known as a multi period compounding so when the word multi period compounding is been used it means we can again decompose the entire expression into two parts that is a compounding which is being done for a multiple time period in a very layman's term we can say that the it is a kind of a compounding which has been done across multiple time periods so what is so unusual about this the main fact is that till now we have been talking about those compoundings which were taking place once in a year they were taking place only once in a year assumption was quite simple whatever future value we were calculating for a lump sum the future value we are calculating for annuity for a growing annuity the future value for a, any stream of the cash flows whether they were the uneven cash flows the assumption was simple that the compounding was done once in a year till n number of years but in the real life scenarios you shall find that in most of the cases the compounding is done more than once in a year i repeat myself in the real life scenario you shall find that the compoundings are done more than once in a year so if compoundings are being done more than once in a year it may be done twice it may be done i mean in a quarterly wise that is four times in a year if it is done twice it goes without saying it means it is being half the entire financial year is being divided into two halves so when the compounding are not being restricted to only once in a year they have a implication they have a very profound impact on the formula on the final value of the or the future values of such compoundings which are being done more than once in a year so let's start our discussion on this particular note of understanding and let's see how exactly multi period compounding works how the formula changes and with the help of a few numericals we will try to understand its real life implication so students as you can see it is written over here that till now it has been assumed that the compound interest was being paid only once in a year in reality the compounding may take place more than once in a year example banks and financial institutions may choose to pay interest on a quarterly basis if it is a quarterly basis what does it mean quarterly basis means four times in a year or at the end of the each quarter because we know that there are 12 months in a year and one quarter is one fourth so 12 by 4 it means that at the end of the every third year a compounding is being given effect to so 3 into 4 so that is 12 so quarterly means four times in a year if it is being done semi annually it means it has been the compounding has been done twice in a year banks and financial institutions may choose to pay interest on a quarterly basis companies may choose to pay interest on debentures on a semi annual basis and this thing students that the companies choosing to pay interest on the debentures on the long term loans on a semi annual basis is quite a common phenomenon in fact in the real life scenario when you solve the numericals will solve some cases you will find that the compounding is being done on a semi annual basis usually the interest rate is specified on an annual basis and is known as a nominal interest rate but when the compounding is done more than once the effective interest rate becomes higher now this now this point is of utmost importance to try to understand this thing when the interest rate on a specific investment is being paid on an annual basis that is only once in a year that is the nominal rate which the companies are paying or the investors are enjoying but when the same nominal interest rate is being compounded twice in a year or four times in a year obviously the effective interest rate becomes higher than the nominal interest rate because students we have already seen in the case of compounding that on a very layman's term compounding refers to a process in which the interest which has been earned on the principal is being reinvested back or added back to the principal thereby making the final principal amount high which again earns a 
interest upon itself thereby making the final figure higher than what it would have been otherwise in the case of a simple interest so every interest becomes a new principle in the case of a compound interest so when due to this additive effect of the interest on the principle and then on the finally increased or added amount when a fresh uh, round of interest is being earned so this process when it is being taken up a number of times in a year whether it is a semi annually or it is four times in a year it goes without saying that the final amount of interest which we shall be getting or the final rate of interest we shall which we shall be getting that is bound to be higher than the nominal rate which has been promised to us because student if someone promises us to pay 10% annually it means that our investment is is growing by 10% in one year but if that 10% is being given twice in a year it means that 10% has been broken into half on the first 6 months we are earning 5% so whatever we are earning on the on the initial principal the 5% which we are earning that interest of 5% on the principal is being added back to the principal and then on that added figure another 5% is being earned thereby making the end interest amount higher than what we have been got if the compounding had been done only once in a year because over here the compounding is being done twice in a year and secondly whatever amount which we are getting at the end of the first 6 months that amount is being again added back to the principal thereby making the final principal amount high and then the remaining 6 months shall be earning us an interest on the increased principal thereby making the final value of the interest which we are earning twice in a year higher than what we have been received if the interest would have been obtained only once in a year so the effective so that we are using the word the effective interest rate or the actual interest rate shall be higher than the nominal interest rate why because in the case of the effective interest rate or in the case of a multiplied compounding the nominal interest rate is been given to us not once in a year but n number of times in a year so that's why the effective interest rate becomes higher than the nominal interest rate let's proceed the formula for the effective interest rate eir is eir is equal to within brackets 1 plus i upon m bracket close raised to the power n minus m minus 1 now students if you take a careful look at the formula you will find that there are certain terms which you are finding quite familiar i mean you guys are familiar with how come like 1 plus i to the power of n right now forget about m as a denominator and m as a power let's forget this let's and let's forget this minus 1 also let's try to concentrate ourselves to within bracket 1 plus i to the power of n we all know that 1 plus i to the power of n refers to the future value of a present cash flow which we are willing to obtain at the end of the nth year against i percent rate of interest compounded annually so the moment we are using one it means the moment we are adding one to the existing interest rate it means we have already seen this refers to a clear case of compounding and if it is simply n it means what that the rate of interest i is being compounded annually for n number of years now after a bit of modification the modifications are being undertaken to incorporate the concept of eir that is effective interest rate so effective over here means the actual interest rate which is being obtained after the nominal interest rate undergoes a change in its paying pattern it means that instead of an annual payment it is being paid in a fragmented way in a particular year so whether the fragmentation is being done on a semi annual basis or in a quarterly basis that is a different case altogether but we shall be seeing it from all the angles now the moment we are dividing i by m what is the meaning of the term i divided by m it simply means that i or the effective or the the, the nominal interest rate is being divided by m or m stands for the number of times the compounding is been done in a year so actually m refers to suppose we say that i percent rate of interest or 10 percent and rate of interest is being given compounded semi annually if the i or i percent rate of interest suppose of 10 percent is being compounded semi annually it means i should be divided by 
true because one thing we should be sure of, which one should we should be very careful of. Semi annually means half, half of the nominal interest twice in a year. Semi annually means half of the nominal interest twice in a year. Quarterly means one fourth of the nominal interest four times in a year. Never ever confuse twice in a year by assuming that the nominal interest of 10% is being paid twice. It is not 10 into 10. It is not that 10% is being paid twice. That is, it, it is not 10 into 2, that is 20%. No. So whenever we say the effective interest rate of I by N, it means the I percent rate of interest, that is a 10% nominal interest rate is being paid N number of times in a year which has been raised to the power n into m. So, if it is semi-annual, it means what? Half of i paid twice in a year. If it is quarterly, it means one-fourth of i or nominal interest paid four times in a year. That is the reason that dividing i by m represents that i has been divided by m and then it is being paid m number of times in a year. Once again, students, the moment I divide i by m, it means that a nominal interest rate has been divided by m and that is being paid m number of times in a year because n, n stands for one year and or n stands for number of years in the future. But n into m means that number of time or that n into m means n number of times in one year. Therefore, for whatever time frame the, uh, the entire uh, instrument is bearing its lifespan, it shall be progressing accordingly. Now, let's try to understand it with a simple numerical. Calculate the effective interest rate for a deposit of 100 USD in a bank for a year against an interest rate of 10% compounded semi-annually. So, we know that a deposit is 100 USD in a bank for a year, n is one year, against an interest rate of 10% compounded semi-annually. It means against a deposit of 100 USD in a bank, the depositor won't be getting 10% rate of interest as a compound interest at the end of one year rather he shall be getting 10% semi annual it means 10% he shall be getting twice in a year it means 5% and then 5% it doesn't mean 20% so half of 10% he shall be getting twice in a year as, as I said one nth of i therefore half of i he shall be getting twice in a year so as per the formula EIR is equal to 1 plus half of i that is 0 0.10 upon 2 bracket close 1 into 2 minus 1. So, the effective interest rate is 1 plus 0 0.05 to the power 2 minus 1, 1 1.05 to the power 2 minus 1, that is 1.1025 minus 1, therefore the effective interest rate is 0 0.25. So, now you find that the effective interest rate is higher than the nominal interest rate. The nominal interest rate is 10%, the effective interest rate is 10.25%. So, he is getting 0.25% extra. Why? Because he received 10% semi-annually. It means 5% for the first 6 months, whatever he has earned. So, 5% for, for the first 6 months will be 5% of 100. So, whatever amount he is getting, it shall be added back to 100. And then for the remaining 6 months, he shall be earning another 5% on the increased principal, which is a function of the 100 dollar principal and the 5% interest for the first 6 months. So, therefore, because the compounding has been taking place twice in a year, 2 into 1, of which amount of 1 mth or half of the nominal interest rate, that is 0 0.05. Don't ever think that 10% is being given twice in a year. No, it is not 20%. 10% is being, half of 10% is being given twice in a year. That is half, that is 0 0.10 by 2. It is 1 mth of i is being given m number of times in a year. Therefore, 0 0.10 upon 2, that is 0.05% is being given twice in a year, that is 2 into 1. That's why the nominal interest rate of 0.25% uh, is higher than, the effective interest rate of 0.25% is higher than the nominal interest rate of 10% by 0.25%. Now, a careful look at the formula shall reveal that the nominal interest rate of 10% is not paid twice in a year, rather the half of the interest rate is paid twice. In the case the interest is paid quarterly, then the EIR shall be, EIR is equal to 1 plus i upon m bucket close n into m minus 1. The same thing which I discussed right now student that you should be very careful about assuming that the 10% of the nominal interest rate is not being paid twice in a year. Rather 1 mth, 1 mth portion of the nominal interest rate thereby making it i by i upon m is being paid m number of times in year. So, it becomes i by m 
raised to the power n into m. That's why i upon m is being raised to the power n into m. So the moment we are dividing i by m, it means we are calculating the one mth portion of i, therefore i by m, which has been raised to n number of times in a year, therefore it is n into m. n into m shows what? That how many times the compounding has been done in a year. Which compounding? The compound that compounding which is one nth portion of i. I once again repeat student, n into m shows how many times in a year the compounding has taken place. Which compounding? Compounding of that nominal interest which has been compounded by one nth portion of i. It means the one nth portion of the nominal interest rate has been compounded n number of times in one particular year. Since the last illustration was focused towards the assumption that the interest payment was semi-annual, this particular case shows that had the compounding been taken place on a quarterly basis, it means that I percent rate of interest, that is 0 0.10 nominal rate of interest, would have been fragmented in four equal parts. Because since it is quarterly, it becomes 1 upon 4. Therefore, I upon M becomes I, that is 0 0.10 upon 4 raised to the power n into 4. Because I pers uh, one, one mth or one fourth of I is being paid four number of times in year. Therefore, the effective interest rate will be I plus I upon 4 bracket close n into 4 minus 1. So, this will be the effective interest rate obviously. In this particular case, the amount shall be higher than the nominal interest rate. So, it means that under the effective interest rate calculation, with the assumption of the compounding or the multi-period compounding in taking place four times in a year, the final amount shall be even higher than that amount which would have been obtained had the compounding been done semi-annually or twice in a year. Why? What is the reason, students? Because obviously it goes without saying that in the case of a quarterly multi-period compounding, for every th three months, whatever interest has been earned on the principal, it is being added. And again, the fresh one mth interest interest shall be earned on the new principle which will be the existing principle as well as the interest thereupon for the next three months and this process shall be done four times in a year which shall be eventually giving us a higher effective interest rate as compared to the nominal interest rate or even as compared to the semi annual interest rate the effective interest rate increases with the increase in the number of compoundings in a year it is the same thing which i just explained as the number of compoundings increase, it means as the i upon m increases to the power n, in, n into m increases, more or the greater or the higher shall be the value of the effective interest rate as compared to the nominal, nominal interest rate. Now, the concept of multi-period compounding can be used in the case of future value as well as present value computations of a lump sum and which As I said, that, that the concept of multi-period Compoundings can be used across board, across all the kinds of the calculations or the cash flow calculations. So it can be easily being used in case of calculating the future value as well as the present value computations of a lump sum or an annuity. So irrespective of the fact that how exactly the pattern of a cash flow looks like, whether it is lump sum or it is an annuity, the concept of multi-period compounding can be used in order to calculate their future value as well as their present value. The cal formula for calculating the future value of a lump sum under the multi-period compounding is Fn is equal to P into 1 plus I upon M bracket close raised to the power N into M. Now one thing student over here, this entire discussion rests upon the fact that now we are not concerned with the EIR or the calculation of the effective interest rate. Now we are concerned with the calculation of the future value of such present cash flow which is increasing by i percent rate of interest compounded against a multi-period compounding of m. So, if the m is semi-annual compounding or the m is a quarterly compounding, accordingly this formula shall help us in calculating the future value of such a present cash flow. So, what is the difference between this formula and the last formula which we used in the case of EIR? The difference is that in the case of EIR, we were simply seeing or trying to calculate that how exactly is the effective interest rate changing. We were not much interested in calculating the future value. We were just trying to see that how exactly only the interest rate 
is changing or how exactly the nominal interest rate is changing in light of the fact that the multi-period compounding is being introduced in place of a single year compounding. But in this particular case, we are more interested in a more wholesome figure. It means that we are, cal we are interested in calculating the future value of such a present cash flow which is being compounded against m number of multi-period compounding taking place m number of times in a year. So, 1 upon m raised to the power n into m. By using this formula, we won't be getting the effective interest rate, but by using this formula, we shall be getting the final future value of such a present cash flow, which is undergoing a multi-period compounding of m. It, this multi-period compounding may be semi-annual, this may be quarterly as well. I hope this discussion is clear. One, once again, just for your sake of a better understanding, the main difference between two formula is that in calculation of the effective interest rate, we were more interested in calculating the final effective interest rate and then try to study that how much percentage is the effective interest rate higher than the nominal interest rate. So, by using this particular formula, we saw that over here in this formula, we were not trying to calculate the PEEP factor or we are neither interested in calculating the F or the future value factor. You might be seeing over here, although this term 1 plus i raised to the power m, this for this three variables, 1 plus i raised to the power n might seem very uh, common to you, very relatable to you, but still we do not find the Fn or the future value of the uh, uh, cash flow or even the P or the present value whose cash flow or future cash flow or future value we need to compute. So, this particular formula is dedicated only for calculating the effective interest rate and try to study the difference between the effective interest rate and the nominal interest rate. That is, how much is the effective interest rate more than the nominal interest rate because of the introduction of the multi-period compounding into the entire concept. And if the n would have been or the m would have been only one that is multi, that is the compounding is being done only once in a year then the question of an effective interest rate doesn't arise because in that case effective interest rate and nominal interest rate will be the same but since the m or multi period compounding has been pressed into action therefore we are more concerned with calculating what one nth percent, uh, percent of an i is increasing against m number of times in n year. That's why this formula, that is the formula of EIR, is dedicated only towards calculation of the effective interest rate and not towards calculating the future value of a present lump sum, which is growing at the rate of i percent rate of interest for n number of years against m times of a multi-period compounding. So, please do not confuse between this formula and this formula. Please do not confuse between the formula of calculation of the effective interest rate as well as the formula used for calculating the future value of a lump sum. So, once again, on a finishing note students, this particular formula that is Fn is equal to P into 1 plus i to the power of m bracket close n into m. This is used only when we are interested in calculating the future value of a present cash flow in light of a multi-period compounding and not, I repeat, and not the case of calculation of an EIR. We can't use this particular formula for calculating the EIR, neither can we use the EIR formula for calculating the future value. It means that both the formula, that is, although this term, that is 1 plus i to the power of m, bracket close n, n into m, is identical. It means this, this term is quite similar in as, as this particular term also, but their purpose is absolutely different. Once again, students, the term EIR, that is effective interest rate, is being used to see the final effective interest rate rates increase over the nominal interest rate by using the formula, by using this particular set of formula, while P into 1 plus i to the power m raised to the power n into m is used for calculating the future value of such a lump sum, which has undergone a multi-period compounding. So, I hope we are clear with the concept of multi-period compounding, we are clear with the concept of the effective interest rate and we are also very clear that although the formulas might look a bit similar, their purpose are different. The formula for EIR is different from the formula of calculating the future value of a present cash flow 
undergoing and multi-period compounding. Although both are concerned with the multi-period compounding, the formula for EIR shall give us the fact that how much is the effective interest rate more than the nominal rate, while the formula for Fn is equal to P into 1 plus I upon M, bracket close N into M, shall give us the final future value of such a present cash flow, which has increased by I percent rate of interest after incorporating the feature of multi-period compounding. I hope this discussion is clear, students. Thank you for being a patient listener. In the next session, we shall be taking up certain numericals. Thank you. Drop a like and do share. Leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos.